Hello and welcome into historic Keyworth Stadium in Hamtramck, Michigan for tonight's UWS League 2 matchup between Detroit City FC and Livonia City FC. I'm Jared Mackey alongside Chris Mills. Thank you for joining us. Detroit City FC comes into this one second place in UWS League 2 and their last time out they had a very strong showing against the Grand Haven Admirals right here at Keyworth Stadium and we are now in the business end of the UWS League 2 season. That is right, Jarrett. DCFC are looking to finish strong with their last home game of the year. With Livonia City FC being 10th in the table, this might be their chance to shell out one last time in front of the home crowd here at Keyworth Stadium. I was here, of course, last weekend on Saturday when Detroit City FC defeated the Grand Haven Admirals 2 to nothing. One of the match in that one was Isabella Sabos in the starting 11 today. Number 50 in that purple-blue headband right there was Sabo who... Broke the deadlock about 35 seconds after coming back from that halftime break. And then Lillian Lucas got the second goal in that one. Humid day here at Keyworth Stadium. It's going to be Isabel Saba who's going to take the kickoff herself. As we see Sarah Hammond and the referee investigating on the goal situation. And then for the visitors, Aria Shulaw from Gibraltar, Michigan. Carlson High School goalkeeper over there in net. You mentioned hot day, pretty humid here. Referee's going to get us underway as soon as she's satisfied. This is one of the first games since DCFC's primary women's team stopped playing. And you mentioned earlier in other broadcasts that it's a player pool for the women's teams. And we were interested to see that now that that season's over, if any of the first team uh, players would trickle into the second team for these last couple of games, and I don't believe we're seeing a lot of the first team players in the starting 11 or in the subs, so that answers that question. So it's going to be narrowed down to just the second team for probably these last two games. Yeah, not much of that, but the same UWS2 players that we've seen get some minutes in the first team have been, you know, they, they've stayed around for this final two matches of the UWS League 2 season. Of course, that match that was postponed on July 6th and yet to be rescheduled. So this, uh, kind of unsure what the final few matches of the season look like here for Detroit City FC is the Livonia City visitors get a throw in on that far side. Detroit City FC, that same starting line they tried to make work in that last one. Maddie Salzenstein out there, Sabo up top, and it looks like that's going to be Adriana Morales on that right hand, right wing sort of position. Early turn over here as Allison Steglitz gets onto that one. Isabella Sabo now plays a good oh, ball through. Salzenstein just unable to track that one down. A little bit too much speed there on that through ball. Might be a good sign for things to come for Detroit City tonight. The able idea was there. It yeah, was just the absolutely. speed was just able to pick their way through the midfield thus far. It's kind of been their bread and butter this season, just trying to get to the be the first one of those second balls and try to really suffocate teams in the midfield. Kimberly Siebert there gets it up field. Going forward, Sydney Smith tries to sneak it in there to Katie Coleman, who eventually plays it across into the midfield, sort of a deeper midfield situation. Now Romeo gets her first touch of the game on this near side. Forward now for Detroit City FC. Good idea there from Allison Steglitz who was one of the better players for Detroit City FC in that 2-0 win against the Grand Haven Admirals last Saturday as part of that doubleheader with the first team when they faced Lansing United. Due to it being a player pool, as you mentioned, um, the chemistry between the two teams that was strong as ever last night for the men's first team match between FC Buffalo and Detroit City FC. The women's team was out to celebrate who was named the MVP for the Detroit City FC women's team. That was Madison Duncan. Congratulations to her. Got a nice they bicycle were, out of it. <laughs> they were hanging out in the suite, hanging out in the stands, enjoying the match. So a ton of chemistry between this roster of players. This goes back to the Detroit City FC goalkeeper, Sarah Hammond. Good ball out wide here to Romeo. Plays it forward. Definitely a lot of room over here. Sabo takes a touch, has... Salzenstein Whoa. through again. Looks like the plan so far in these first three minutes has been to just try to get Salzenstein in behind the Livonia back line. Of course, Madison Salzenstein, 2021 Mrs. Soccer in the state of Michigan. Really prestigious award there to win. The first ever winner of that award from Detroit Country Day. 
committed to Western Michigan University. Her second appearance in the Detroit City FC, Rouge and Gold. First being against the Grand Haven Admirals last week. She looked really composed, really lethal going forward. Just has to be found. And looks like early on here they're going to try to find her in this one. Another ball over the top. Isabella Sabo picks up the scraps on that one. Get it out. Forward. That's a really good ball out wide to Sydney Smith. Right footed ball in. Salzenstein gets it through. Just nearly poked away there by the Livonia center back. It was Adriana Moraz who's looking to get on the end of that one. Detroit applying a lot of pressure early on. Being able to swing the play from the midfield to the left and the right with a lot of success so far and then just haven't connected on those first couple through balls. What's interesting to me is, you know, we watch all these Detroit City FC teams play. You and I were on the call last Sunday uh, for the under 23s match. Every single Detroit City FC team seems to play the same way. Sort of a Detroit City FC DNA, if you will. Just really work really hard in the midfield, super, you know, high pressing center backs. And we're seeing results for it all year. It's been success across the board like nothing else. Yeah, you need that fluidity amongst both your sides for both the women and the men's. Like, for like, if you want to bring somebody through, you can't expect them to like quickly learn a new, like, formation or a new tactic, and expect that like it, that people are just going to effortlessly fit in. Like with the U23s team, you got like people like Keith Larson that's able to just fit in, play the same kind of soccer up top that you like you you would in the second team, and like you got to have that same style of play amongst your different ranks of like soccer. Isabel Saba here does well to skip past Livonia City defender. Salzenstein in the box. Didn't really oh, strike oh. it too well. She would like that one back. She was pretty much unmarked in the area on that one. And any sort of height there would have beaten the goalkeeper. That was a great bit of play. Going back to the goalkeeper, Sarah Hammond. Gets it forward. But, yeah, I think nine times out of ten, so I don't see him to tuck that one home. Just didn't really strike it cleanly. Really good ball in by Isabella Sabo into the box. But yeah, you mentioned having that same sort of structure so that when you get do get called up to the first team, like we saw last night with some of the under-23s guys, or when you go from the UWS League 2 to the UWS first team, you just know what you're expected of you, especially since all these players train together and have all season, really practicing the same stuff, teaching – the same way of play soccer. But good ball here through from Salzenstein. Sabo out there. Now on the far side, going to watch it go out of play for a Livonia City throw in. Yeah, very important with the success of all of Detroit's teams is the quality of coaching uh, at the levels is something pretty important that we've seen. Coach, coach the coach for Detroit City FC's UWS two side, George Easter. Up until last season was the head coach of the Livonia City FC women's side. Saw those coaches of the current coaching staff and George Easter catch up a little bit before the match. Of course, Mami Yamaguchi is a name you guys have heard if you've tuned into a broadcast of any of our women's sides so far this season. She's an assistant coach down there on the touchline with George Easter. And, of course, the first team coach, Sam Perani, helps out. Good ball here forward. Can... Mirage get to the end of this one. Looks like it's going to slow down a little bit before going out of play. Just dribbles out for a goal kick. It's going to be taken by Ara Shulaw. Back there in net. No work yet for Sarah Hammond really in goal. No chances really yet either for Detroit City FC that have been on target. That Salzenstein chance would have worried Shulaw a little bit there between her sticks, but didn't really have to make the save for it. We'll get a throw in here on the near side now for Livonia City. Livonia City, of course, will play Detroit City FC, three of their teams this year. This one, UWS League 2, they've already played the under-23 side twice on the men's side. And they're coming to Keyworth Stadium in a few weeks' time to play the first team in the Nisa Independent Cup. So these two organizations really familiar with each other this year in 2021. Sydney Smith gets a... Ball inside. Decent run Romeo in. Romeo on the right now. There we go. Romeo now looking to shape a ball into the box. There it is. Just poked away. Salzenstein, though, applying the pressure. Looks like she'll win a throw in for her side with that pressure. Sometimes that's all it takes. You you know pressure these center backs in the box and teams try to play out of the back. 
can lead to some good opportunities. Here we go, edge of the area, right-footed effort. Really good movement on that one from Allison Steglitz, just not really the speed she would have liked on it. Definitely a casual save for Shulaw. The most advanced Livonia City has been in a couple minutes here as they enter the Detroit City half. Ball is going to stay with them. Throw in down the line. Seabirds running over to quell out any danger. It's going to go out for a throw in. Of course, Kimberly Seabert played in that free kick where Detroit City FC scored their second goal against the Grand Haven Admirals last Saturday. Let's see how well Livonia City can press this opportunity here, having them backed up so far. Looks like Detroit's breaking free so far. As you mentioned in the open, not the best year so far for the Livonia City FC. And a lot of high school players on the roster, definitely a developmental side as well as, as this UWS2 side. Good pressure there from Romeo. Looks like it's going to, whistle's going to come. Maybe, never mind. Now the whistle comes. It'll be a throw into Livonia. Relatively deep in Detroit City FC's half compared to what they've had so far. Throw in now, taking pretty long. Romeo does well to power that off and then try to play forward Salzenstein or Sabo. Salzenstein, Sabo, and Steglitz. Hate to be a commentator and have a lisp and have to talk about these last names. Yeah. Work with, you know, what you got. Salzenstein does well to keep that one in, but only as far as Abby Lamercy. Good job there by Siebert to clean that one up. Forward now, Katie Coleman has some time on the ball before getting it out to Steglitz. Head forward now from Steglitz. Tried to find Moroz there, just too much speed on that one. It's a humid day, so we'll see how much that impacts the way these two teams try to play out here as the day progresses. But the good thing about UWS League 2 is rolling substitution, so you can come off, go back on, pretty much like college soccer you're used to watching that. A lot of chances still with these uh, Detroit through balls I just haven't picked up yet. Sydney Smith now in an advanced fullback position. Salzenstein as well to bring it down. Ooh. Tried to just touch it past that Livonia right back. Unable to get anything going there. Touched out of play last by Livonia City. Looks like that was Mara McGlynn. She'll want that one back. Forward Sabo now. Trying to use her strength to get that ball back. Midfield now, Bree Rogers. Romeo in some space on this near side. Romeo with the ball under the box, leaping up for it. Kind of just headed that one flat. Referee's going to have her flag up and say that was offside. We're starting to see, though, Detroit City FC's game plan. As you see, every single match just kind of seep through, get it out to those fullbacks. I've seen a lot of that in the modern game these days. Fullbacks are becoming so important. Why do you think that is, Chris? Uh, it's just something where they, they help out on like the attacking side of the ball where like you can get the, the wing backs, if you can get some kids that have some like have some air in their lungs, be able to run up the left and right the entire time, it becomes very pivotal to get that overlap and underlapping play for the wings to have somebody from the defense come up and then all of a sudden if the midfield isn't tracking back, then it's a two on one scenario going down one wing where you can play an easy one two going through. And oftentimes teams just leave wing backs exposed because, you know, crossing a ball into the box, that's a low um, percentage situation. Uh, you know, nine times out of ten, crosses don't really – nothing comes of them. Mm -hmm. So teams just leave wing backs exposed all the time. And George Easter is trying to hope that Livonia City does that here today. Southampton's not able to control a ball. We'll see three subs, I believe, here coming in for Livonia early in this one. Yeah, if Livonia doesn't end up – marking Romeo at some point, then Romeo's going to be able to pick out a ball. We got number 15, Katie Mazur, out here on the left, and if she doesn't... Sabo into the area, right-footed effort, save. Salzenstein on the rebound, just unable to get it inside that near post. Corner what? here for Detroit City FC. Sorry to cut you off there, No, Chris. man. We're going to get these Play substitutions in. Going to get these three substitutions. See, like it was gonna come 20, on and 17, and 29. That'll be Janelle Ilo. Jenna Gawk and Kaylee Belton coming in the match for Livonia City. Looks like. Wouldn't be shocked if we saw those players re-enter at some point. First corner of the match coming in now. 
from Detroit City FC on this near side. Ball played into the box. Out only as far as Detroit City FC. Midfielder, right footed ball in. Edge of the area, spilled out in front and cleared away for another corner. It's the thing we see a lot on corners is, you know, the keeper will make the save from the first one and then just have an issue getting it back out. We'll see the strike again here. It looks like it was Bree Rogers who got it out to Romeo. Played it in. This was the header that was deemed offside a few minutes ago. Just in case. Corner coming in. Far side. Bree Rogers trying to get a foot on it. Romeo, edge of the area, has some space to work. Gets it back out wide. Romeo got it out wide, and then it was, that was Sabo on the far side who played that one in. Good touch there. Coleman. Gets it back out to Sabo. Right footed ball into the box. Morose is going to run onto it, but referee on the near side has her flag up offside against Detroit City FC. It's a B flies into the press box. Yeah, Jarrett would, all, would know all too well what Bs can do to you as uh, yesterday. Especially at Keyword Stadium. Yeah. yeah. You want to share the story? I had roses on my shirt. You know, I probably was asking for it. Yeah. First yeah. time I've been sung by a B in my life, so not ones to mess with. Goal kick taken here. Good spin there by Bree Rogers, who scored in Detroit City FC's first ever match in EWS League 2, that 2-1 victory at the Canton Cup. Detroit City FC started their season off with goals from Bree Rogers and Tori Singstock. Rogers' goal ended up being the winner in that one. Good pressing there from Moreau's, nothing coming of it. Diagonal balls are so dangerous in this game if you can make them work and be consistent with them. We saw that attempt there from Livonia City left back. Livonia is getting a lot of space in this midfield right now. Caught Detroit sleeping a little bit, not getting right back into formation as the defense was able to head off two balls, but to no Detroit midfielders. Good pressure there from Livonia caused somewhat of a mistake there from Leah Courtney, who was then able to really control that pass and go out for Detroit City FC goal kick. So. No harm, no foul on that one. Sydney Smith has some space on that far side. Gets it into Katie Coleman. Sabo with her back to goal. Ross got some space out here on the right. Morning City FC though, doing well to win the ball back in the midfield. Looks like they were a little bit nervous at the start of this match, but seem to have settled in these last couple of minutes. Well, like, why does that say that though? Play. Sabo yeah. comes in. Pounces on a Ooh. mistake and just kind of drags that one a little bit too wide. She'll want to make up for that one in the final 74 minutes of this one. We see a substitute coming in for Detroit City FC. Looks like it's Tori Singstock on this near side. I'd like to have seen Sabo uh, dribble that in a little bit more, maybe find a runner eventually if she can keep taking on the defender there instead of just shooting from that far out. It's definitely a tough ask. See the logic, though, behind it. Keep her off her line. Yeah. But yeah, I think I, I think she had what, the space to yeah. dribble there. What do we know? Exactly. Steglitz now tried to get it across. Referee says that was all ball. Might have been. Livonia City FC have numbers forward here. Could break. Good job getting it out wide. And now ball played over the top. It's going to be Kimberly Siebert that's going to run back and get that one. Instead, Sarah Hammond is going to say, that's mine. I got it. And pick it up. Roll it back out to Siebert. See Tori Singstock coming in. Of course, the... Most lethal goal, goal scorer in this Detroit City FC UWS2 setup. Scored the first ever goal for Detroit City FC's women's setup last year. A road match against Midwest United in sort of a friendly. I say that every broadcast because it's really a historic goal for a lot of reasons. Bonus City here has some sustained possession for the first time in this one. Ball played into the box. Edge of the area now. Livonia City FC dribbling, trying to find... That advanced striker just unable to do so. Too many bodies in front of that one from Delaney Millis. And now Detroit City FC here could look to break forward. Coleman finds Sabo. Sabo takes a touch, get it to Bree Rogers. She's unable to dribble past the Livonia midfielder. Does a good job winning it back, though. Destructing. Trying to get Moreau's upfield, but instead runs onto it herself. Bree Rogers cutting inside. Finds Steglitz. Running with speed, finds Sabo in the edge of the area. Sabo does well to dribble Beautiful. inside, right-footed ball in. Keeper wasn't so sure about it. Back to Sabo here. 
Ball in. Salzenstein just kind of threw her body at that one. Nothing coming there. Kind of came at her too fast. Rogers as well to maintain possession for Detroit City FC. Left footed ball in. Rogers wow. from distance knocks it in. Detroit City FC gets on the board here in the 18th minute courtesy of Bree Rogers' left foot. What a strike that was, Chris. Oh, absolutely. It all started with Sabo being able to dribble in, but gets it out. But see, instead of shooting, sometimes you like to take it on. She had a nice heel-to-heel -heel flick and create a lot of a lot of chances out there. And then the ball gets gets put out for a, a beautiful goal by Bree Rogers on the from the left side. I going to say, Arya Shalaw didn't look too confident when clearing that ball away. It came back to Sabo, and Salenstein just kind of had to throw her body at it. She was standing nearly on the goal line, got it back out to Rogers, who did well, and then did incredible with that left-footed strike that found its way over Shalaw's head and into the back of the net. You got to say that, goal, that, that lead is deserved for Detroit City FC to make matters worse. Not only did they score, they then put on the most lethal goal scorer in Tori Singstock. Now you got Sabo on the right. See what she can do with the dribbling. She just showed off for us for that last goal. It was Moreau's that comes out in, in order for Tori Singstock to make her way into this match. Tori Singstock this year, four goals, one assist for this UWS League Two side. This could be a prolific right wing with Romeo and uh, Sabo. See if they can take advantage of that. Like we said with those wing backs being so dangerous. Ooh, almost a risky ball there. Yeah, Leah Courtney played that one across. Ended up being all right, but for a second there, kind of worried that could be a turnover in a dangerous position, but Salzenstein does well to get on the end of that one. Over to Courtney again. Finds Romeo on this near side. Romeo's kind of had this near side to herself. Really good go. one, too, there with Sabo to create some space. Looks like that one, that tackle kind of caught her a little bit. Walking a little bit gingerly right now. Sabo, head up, just poked away there. Couldn't really find good any bite. options in front of her for that one, for sure. It's hard to. Lacey Shannon did a really good job poking that one away. The Heartland, Michigan defender. Devonport University for good ball over the top here. Kimberly Sievers going to have to track back on this one. One-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. Hammond goes to ground, does well enough to get a hand on that ball. Siebert stays down. The trainer will have to tend to her. What a gutsy save. Coming off your line like that, always Absolutely. a risk. Lucky enough to get the ball on the first, See it here. On the first attempt. Siebert was pushed off it there, and then Hammond. Oh, that's awesome. All she needed was one touch on it to deny Kate Mazur of a goal. She did just that as the trainer trying to come on here to help Kimberly Siebert. Just waved down to the field by the referee. Looks like she's holding her left knee, so unfortunate situation there. As both teams going to use this to maybe... Grab a sip of water. For Livonia City, I think they're going to use this maybe as a coaching opportunity. Definitely their best uh, attack right there. A nice ball forward that they were able to get on. Really good through ball. Absolutely. And that all started with a throw in from Lacey Shannaday, who I was talking about. Devonport University played there her junior and senior year. We'll see it here again. Just ball in. Kate Mazur tried to go past Hammond, it looked like. Did a really good job. She just get anything on it course, Sarah Hammond from Canton, Michigan, Westland University. This is her third start for the EWS League Two side this season. Had the clean sheet against the Grand Haven Admirals last weekend. Save like that's got to make you feel good after around 22 minutes and not doing a whole lot and to have that come in front of you and being able to make that save, that'll boost you. We hear goalkeepers talk about all the time how mentally strong you have to be in situations where your team's dominating because you can't check out. You have no time to check out. You check out, something like that could happen. A really quick through ball down the wing, and really good job there by Hammond to stay checked into this one. As we see, I believe that's going to be Yvonne Clark coming in for Detroit City FC to replace, for right now, the injured Steglitz, or excuse me, Siebert. Referee making sure. Yeah, Clark will go on the left side of that, uh, that center back pairing. Detroit City FC's University 2 set had a really – Solid center back pairing of Natalie Graff and Gabby Tremonti, but last couple of matches they haven't really been around. Graff started in that Lansing match, part of that double header last Saturday. Immediately in this match, Clark gets a touch on the ball. Played forward now. Romeo does well. Wind it back. Steglitz. Good pressure there from Steglitz. 
Arguably Holmes, the best yeah. last name out here today. Salzenstein is a pretty good last name. Uh, you're right. Forward now. Livonia City is going to try to go after that newly entered center back. It's always hard when a defender enters the match for the first time. Don't really have a you know, touch of the ball yet. Sabo trying to be found there. A little bit deeper, Sabo, as you've seen her so far in this one. Romeo looking up. Singstock's pointing where she wants that one. She's going to be nearly found over the top, but a last ditch sort of touch there from Claire Carolino. Played out of there by Shannon Day. Romeo did a great job of uh, relieving the, the pressure for her side. Who found themselves pretty pinned back by Livonia the last 30 seconds there. Singstock, good close control from her. Cuts inside, gets it out. Katie Coleman now left-footed effort, edge of the area, and just into the hands safely from Shu Law. Katie Coleman not afraid to rip those. She has two starts, three appearances for the U.S. League Two side coming into today. We'll see it again here. Singstock did well to find her edge of the area. That ball had some good speed on it. There's not enough movement as she would have liked to find that one in the back of the net. She'll be asking Bree Rogers for notes as to how she managed to score that one. Good. Well, the notes involved getting it up. Good ball in here. Right-footed effort to the back post. Unmarked at that back post was Jenna Guck. Who really just needed to throw a foot at it? Just that definitely would have been a tough reach. one. Getting to it or not, with the angle she was at, a great opportunity though for Livonia City FC. We're seeing a couple more chances coming for them now. Definitely have the momentum after that chance where they had that through ball that Hammond was the hero on. Ball played forward now. Sabo takes a touch on this near side. Shaney there again, it's played away. Sabo though wins it back. Leaves it for Romeo. Playing across the back line now, Detroit City FC wanting to slow things down a little bit. Last couple minutes, they've been up against it. Sydney Smith wants to keep that one in play. We got a big B in the press box yep. right now. He's Just checking out all the cables and cords. Yeah, and he's gone, thank the Lord. See a lot of teams. We have uh, Leah Courtney from the defense, you know, someone that can pick a ball out from, is not afraid to use her feet. Definitely a ball playing defender. As we have the fist raised as another B has entered the press box. It's definitely one of those summers here in Michigan. So he's checking out the fan. Yeah, he's our sideline reporter. He's coming in to check in with us. He wants some area time. Goal kick now from area Shoe Law getting ready here. Shoe Law not going to be too pleased to be beaten on that Bree Rogers shot. But not really much she could do. The height it was at wasn't that fast. Just the height and the placement of it was too good for her to get out to. Again, just blasting it long, trying to find somebody, but only finds the Google Fi ad sign there on the touchline. It'll be a throw into Detroit City FC. Get it forward now. See, we're going to have a foul here against Livonia City. Still going through it in this press box. Is this uh, what appears to be a smaller wasp trying to find out what's going on? Looks like Katie Coleman now going to stand over this one for Detroit City FC. A lot of bodies in their back post. Looks like they're going to swing it, swing it far if she can. Try to get something into the mixer here. Anything can happen. Ball over the top. Going to be Seglitz. She was going to try to rise to that one. Not really the best kick we've seen all day here. Forward now, though, Livonia City. Trying to exploit those wing backs that Detroit City FC has been doing. Good touch there. Forward now. Can be Jenna Guck, the one who was unable to get to that last one. Tried to find her teammate in Ooh. space. Not the most confident clearance in the world there by Sydney Smith. See what Livoni City can do with this corner kick. The first of the match here for Livonia City FC. Of course, we got on this near side. We're right by where some of the fans are. Looks like it's going to be Claire Carlino that's going to run over to take it. Lourdes University graduated in 2017 where she played nearly 1,100 minutes. Right footed corner now into the box. Not really cleared away, not really to anyone was that corner. And Livonia City maintained possession here, edge of the area. Try to get a ball in, but it was Bree Rogers right shin that kept that one out of the box. Good step over there by Steglitz to keep possession for her side. S trying to break forward there with Salzenstein. First touch just kind of let her down on that one. Tackle there. Referee's going to say that was clean. Looks some like she's playing advantage now. Saw some point in there. Definitely the advantage. 
Step over there. Romeo does well to not only get the ball back, but also a, key, a quick little step over there to keep possession for her side. But a turn over here, but really, really good job to get it back out to Romeo. Leah Courtney did great there. Forward now, Bree Rogers finds Tori Singstock. Hasn't had many touches since coming on Tori Singstock. Oh, she's through now. Ball played through now. Singstock has Salzenstein up with her. Just went for the oh. shot again. That'll be the time. The angle wasn't really there. Yeah, no, the angle was getting closed down significantly from uh, the Livonia defender there. A really exactly. good job of the yeah. Livonia defender, though, yeah. for sure. I don't know if the angle was there really for a pass either. It would, it, it would have had to have been a lot yeah. sooner. We'll see it here. Just kind of tried to go near post. Didn't really have the speed on it. She beat found, true love. Yeah. If she found Salestown a little earlier in that run, she might have been able to first time it, but it was great defense. Shooters shoot though, so not yeah, you know not right. too absolutely when you upset with that one. When you're leading the side with four goals, you know, want to get out there and prove your worth, especially when you didn't get the start today. Brought S on. Sydney Smith's gonna watch that one bounce out of play. For Livonia throw in. Here's some fireworks taking place outside of Keyword Stadium. Yeah, why not? You know. It's daytime, you know. Kids being kids. Best time for fireworks. Absolutely. Katie Coleman now onto it. Tried to find Singstock in behind. Ooh. Who did well to pressure. Livonia fullback. Just not enough to win possession back. 30 minutes into this one. one nothing Detroit City FC leader. Was that Bree Rogers goal from the edge of the area? The difference in this one so far. Since coming on, Ivana Clark has been not tested too much. I think she's looked pretty good out there. It's her first only first and only appearance so far for Detroit City FC side. You got two subs queuing up for Livonia. Looks like that'll be Mara McGlynn coming back into this match. As well as Abby Lemers also coming back in. Lemercy. Go with that second one, Abby LaMercy coming in. Good job there by Steglitz. Romeo now looking forward. Got Sabo to her right, feeds her through. Find Sabo, far two, for Sabo. Yeah, two yep. maybe too much speed on that one. Goes out of play for a Livonia throw in. Referee's gonna allow these two subs to come back into the match. Some trade bibs with players are coming in for. Was informed there was new jerseys for these Livonia City FC side. Yeah, they look great. They're cool, they're cool looking kits for sure, like the number Font on the back a little bit. Yeah. Nice colorway, you know. Not too bad. Not like getting a nice colorway for the kids, you know. Something to be a little excited about. Get, the, get a nice new kid on, which they have. Looks great on them. Good win there by Salzenstein. Tried to get something going there. Referee's going to say it goes out for a goal kick. The Wasps has finally left our booth if you're wondering what a broadcaster <laughs> may or may not go through during a game at a uh, little peek behind the curtain yeah, yeah. and eyeballing a wasp that's two feet in front of your face the entire time while you're calling a game romeo forward finds sabo good one two there we've seen that one two a few times in this one we might see it again here romeo finds sabo edge of the area dribbles inside kind of pushed off the ball there still on it right footed ball in singstock throws a boot at it and Ooh. goes over the football goal post We'll see two more subs here for Detroit City FC. We'll see Kimberly Siebert make her way back on following the injury. That's good. And we'll also see Julia Stancato come into this match. It's a great defending from uh, the Livonia left back. See it here. Really good from Lacey Shanaday. Saw her end up getting the ball into the box, but wasn't really Put her off a little bit doing with that, so. uh, yeah. that bump, something he had to do. Looks like Savo's going to be going out to the left now. So we got Stancato coming into the match for Salzenstein. Some fresh legs on the right. See if Romeo can feed her through some some through balls. See if you can get some fresh legs running. Continue the the press that Sabo had. Rogers turns. Sabo and Rogers been out there this whole match so far, as well as Steglitz and most of that back line. Romeo oh, as well. Mess. Singstock found here. Singstock cuts inside, tries oh. to cut again. Finds Steglitz, edge of the area. Steglitz takes a touch, right-footed effort from Steglitz. Parried wow. away by Shulaw. What a beautiful effort. Takes it onto her right foot, takes one touch, and what a beautiful save that was. Turned out to be by Shulaw. Here we go. She takes it, takes that one touch, and belts it. It's a great, great save for Shulaw to get up 
and to her left. One touch from Stegliff that really set her up for that strike. Had the speed on it, had the pace. Just a really good parry away there by Shulaw. Corner in now. A little bit of mishap in the box. Siebert newly coming on. Nearly had a say on that one. Siebert again heads it up. Oh. Singstock front of the goal. Ah, uh, offside. Referees didn't say that was offside. Really good great heading bit of, there. Great bit of creativity from that uh, from that corner. It could be a couple of players able to get a few uh, few touches on it that inadvertently may have set up, uh, you know, some trickery from the training ground. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Good turnover here. A little fumble of the words there. Forward yeah. now. Stancato tries to cut inside, unable to do so. We got a balloon over the pitch. Singstock now. Really good job keeping possession on that near side. Pushed off the ball eventually. Referee's going to say that was clean. Forward now is Detroit City FC through Leah Courtney, who does well to get it out from that center back position. Sydney Smith on the far side, dribbling inside. Coleman out to Sabo. Sabo takes a few touches. Plays the ball in. Looks like Stancato could be breaking the back line here. Just chips it over. Referee heard a whistle there. Yeah, Not sure. Their Referee offside call. Did have her flag up for offsides on that one. Looks like we're going to get another sub here for Livonia City. See it here. Sabo played. Uh, you know, it was a close call. Definitely shouldn't. She was going to have that shot whether or not she was offside. Just tucked it over. Livonia keeper Shula made herself big on that one and put Stancato. Kind of off her focus there. I like the game plan from Detroit City FC so far. Definitely a lot of those through ball actions that we've seen. It hasn't hit yet, but we've had a lot of uh, dribbling into the box. That's where we've seen the success and the goal come from. It hasn't hit yet, but in a lot of ways it has. There have been a lot of chances yeah. that have come from this, but you know, maybe one offside flag, too many, mm. um, and a few shots that have come from it as well. I believe the balloon over the field has passed, for those wondering. Forward now. Romeo on this near side. Head up. Good ball to find Singstock. Looking forward now. Singstock tries to get Stancato involved in that one. Romeo back to it. Rogers there. Really good job with that body shield to get possession over to Siebert. We see Smith now. Sydney Smith for Detroit City FC from Canton, Michigan. Western Michigan University. We talked about in last week's broadcast how with her being a Western Michigan Bronco and her teammate for Detroit City FC, Madison Salzenstein, committing there, it's going to be a lot easier for her to transition into campus, having played some minutes with Sydney Smith in this Detroit City FC side. Turn over here for Detroit City FC. Lavonia now looking forward. Kate Mazur pushed Great off the ball. Really good job there by Leah Courtney. Leah Courtney hasn't put a foot wrong all game from what I've seen. Being able to command uh, when they're out the press, being able to put balls back into play, swing it out to the left and the right, and definitely winning some tackles like this one. Able really to step good in ball. and get all ball there, yeah. Good ball by Kelly Poston, though, the new Boston, Michigan, Saginaw Valley Cardinal graduate. We see a substitution here, I believe. That might be number 15, Katie Mazur, who almost got on the end of that one and was – the recipient of that gorgeous through ball that Hammond had to come out for to claim for her side to keep the lead in this one. Between that save and uh, Shoe Law's save that she had to get up for, looking at the competitors for save the game. Unfortunate throw there for Detroit CFC, but Romeo coming going to help to out her back line. Middle of the field. First time we've seen her there so far today to clean out that one. Sydney Smith on the far side plays it up to Sabo. Good idea for her to get touches. it forward. There wasn't a lot of uh, a lot of fluidity amongst that back line where she was at. Steglitz now. Referee. There we go. Whistle in the mouth for that one. Referee's been letting them play, though. There's been a few tackles that have, you know, haven't looked from up here anyways that they've been that clean. But referee's allowing them. But blowing the whistle when she has to. Hasn't gotten chippy or anything out here yet. Don't expect it to. No. Sydney Smith now. Finds... Coleman, ball in, Singstock's broken the back line, Another tucks loss. it over, but really just into those what would be VIP bleachers yep. in the first team match day. Singstock, referee, offside flag has not been Detroit City FC's best friend in this one, has no, it? No, yeah, definitely a 
one of those situations where you, you know want to be on the right side of the defender for all these nice uh, through balls. Maybe maybe uh, the, that pass has to come in a little bit earlier. Run's got to happen a little a little further back. Maybe that's something they go into halftime discussing that these runs got to come from a little bit further out. Not the best kick there from Shulaw, but not really made to pay for it yet. Throw in now for Detroit City FC. Sydney Smith on that far side in Livonia's half. Going to run over to take it. Gets it into Siebert. Siebert, like I mentioned, she played in that free kick that set up Sydney Smith's goal. It's a beautiful ball. Romeo's good able ball to take it down. Romeo. Good switch. Good job by Romeo there to put it over the head of Livonia defender. Because I'm able to get it on the reverse side of it. Now Livonia have bodies forward. Delaney Millis. Cutting inside, cutting inside again. Does well there to find Kelly Poston. Right for the ball into the box. Into the box, out of the box for Detroit City FC goal kick. Romeo may be doing a little bit too much there on that right right wing back position. Maybe got a little too excited kicking the ball up and then losing in transition, but no harm, no foul. Stancato does really Ooh. well there to beat Lacey. Shanna Day and has some space in front of her now. Cuts back in. Back to goal. And then just beats her again. Shanaday, ball into the box. Sing stocks there. Lays it off to Salvo. Right footed effort. Wow. Goalkeeper. He were planted there. Shula was. That would have been on frame. Would have been difficult for her. Good play there. Really good play from Stancato on this near side to find Sing Stock, mm -hmm. who did well to flick it up there. And then that would have been a uh, huddle special right there for uh, Salvo if that managed to find the back of the net for sure. Great link-up play between the front front three for that that attack. One of Sabo's best traits is her ability to just, you know, tuck home under pressure. We saw her goal against Grand Haven. It was a through ball played in that she put under the goalkeeper. So we know she's a lethal finisher. You get too many chances like that to her. Great touch there by Bree Rogers. Bree Rogers bring that down. She'll get one off eventually. Really good touch there by Rogers. But now Lavoni trying to get something going, but Romeo ever present. That right back position. Trying to get something going now. Coleman. Finds Sabo who gets it back to Smith. Back inside to Coleman. Coleman unable to get past for the time being, but gets past eventually. It'll go out for now Detroit City FC throw in. 41 minutes gone here at Keyworth Stadium nearly. Detroit City FC up one to nothing. Cybert on the ball now who came back from her. Knock that she received about 20 minutes into the first half. Good to see her back out here. DCFC Smith. brings it up now. Just nearly a missed touch there by Lacey Shannaday, who really, you mentioned Courtney hasn't put a foot wrong all day. On Livonia's side, Shannaday really has done a really good job taking in all that pressure from the Detroit City FC wing backs and wingers. Looks like we got a knock here. As somebody's coming off is number 17. Jenna Guck is coming on. 41 and a half minutes have passed us in this one. You know, Chris, that Detroit City FC League is deserved. I agree. Definitely something uh, that they've been working hard to. Could, if it wasn't for a few offside flags, maybe they'd have a little bit more or just not be able to get that ball in correctly. But I feel like they've definitely dominated this first half. There's probably a lot more to come. You can definitely see that they're having their way with some of these through balls and being able to dribble past the defense, especially on this right side. Coming into this match, George Easter, they side really couldn't have asked for a better match to close out the home part of their season. Really, you know, I mentioned in the open, we're in the business end of the season. We got this home match and then one more away match to close out the season. Still no word on if that match from July 6th is going to be rearranged. As we see Isabella Sabo going to get a water break here for the first time in this one, being replaced by Adriana Moroz, who started this one on the near side. It looks like she'll take Sabo's place on that far side. Sabo gets a early halftime here. Playing the ball across the back line a little bit. A lot of jeopardy in that. Sydney Smith trying to get it before it goes out of play. Great job for our ball boy there. Yeah. Kid's always doing a lot of good work. Yep. Especially helping us with a certain PA system. Yeah. One of those match day interns doing a great job. Making sure this place looks beautiful and ready to go for matches. Ball is going to be one back there by Shanaday on this near side. Ball into the box. Excellently poked away there by the Detroit City FC back line. 
Looks like it'll be a throw in now for Detroit City FC. Creeping up here on getting into stoppage time in this first half. Singstock, near side, looks up, plays in Morose, has Stegler up her. with her. Morose tries to play the ball in. Looks like it's going to go off Livonia last for the corner. Really high football IQ there to win that corner for Detroit City FC. Yeah, she was pushed out to the right a little bit by the defender. There's only a lot. Only one option left is just uh, picking off the defender. Hopefully she gets a corner out of that. I see that a lot just when you're forced out that far wide. The best case scenario sometimes is just blast it at their shin and hope it goes off them last for the corner. Oh, absolutely. It's like basketball, trying to save the loose ball. Coleman now, corner in. Touch there by Singstock. Right-footed effort. Goes over everybody, including that Keyworth wall. Yep. So those match day interns we talked about are going to have to go behind the wall and get that one from the train tracks. And they do a great job. He'll be back within 30 seconds. They're quick. He's going. We see him there running yep. to get that one. Nice area back there, though. A few trees, nice little walking path. So no danger for him as Shoe Law gets us back underway. Smith there. Good pressure from Smith to force that one out of play. It'll be a Detroit City FC throw in in Livonia's half. Forward now. Not Ooh. the best control there by Steglitz. Does well to win it back. Referee blows her whistle there and calls the foul. Look, we can take it quick. Bree Rogers thought about taking it quick, but she seemed alone on that one. We're going to see now. Leah Courtney on it. Definitely the better of the two. Kimberly. We're playing the ball. Ball forward. Might find Stancato here. Was awkward Ooh. for the goalkeeper for a second, and then Singstock kind of just threw her right foot. That would have been the goalkeeper's abdomen. But good job by Shula there to stay cool under pressure. Carlson High School goalkeeper from Gibraltar, Michigan. No doubt one of the younger players out there on the field today. Referee's going to have that whistle up on the far side. See that. It's one of those situations where maybe, you know, instead of offside, we, we see the ref play the advantage on the offside. But she did get a, she did get a touch on it, which would – most of the time, once the offside player gets a touch on it, that you do have to call it dead. Singstock tried to play that one in. DCFC definitely feel a little hard done on that. Romeo with their hands up after that. Good pressure there from Stancato. Looks like it's going to – we're going to stop it's time here in the first half. Ball put over the top. Siebert's going to be up there with Hammond, but Hammond says, I got this one. She, Siebert has every right to believe her after what we saw. That gorgeous through ball that Hammond got her hand on to quell any danger there. Mm. Can't imagine there's going to be too much stoppage time in this first half. There was the goal, but not many fouls or things of that nature. Did have the Injury. cyber knock. But uh, no fourth official today, so we don't see uh, any communication between the main anything. official and what would be a fourth official on how many how much at a time they want. So it's just it's a guessing game for us. Yep, whenever our main official today wants to call it. She's got it definitely in her head. Good job there to almost win the ball back there. Free kick here, close. Siebert was brought down. Looks like that was by Janelle. Oh, Stiglitz. Milo. Stiglitz, yeah. yeah. Not the first one I've messed up today. Oh. Stiglitz has been really good in that midfield so far for Detroit City FC. ton of pressure from her as well as just uh, whenever she's on the ball, you can see that technical ability that she has, the Ann Arbor, Michigan native. Skyline High School, right outside of the big house, down there in Ann Arbor. Forward now. Dangerous ball there from Rose. Uh, Seibert. Steglitz now mentioned that pressure. Going right onto it again there. Ooh. Forces sort of an errand ball out of play. Referee's not going to let Detroit City FC take it, although it was pretty deep. Going to the half of this one, Detroit City FC holding a 1-0 advantage over Livonia City FC. They've dominated that first half. We'll be back for the second half here at Keyword Stadium on YouTube. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to Keyworth Stadium here in Hamtramck, Michigan, where Detroit City FC is currently enjoying a 1-0 lead over Livonia City FC. we got a goalkeeper substitution here for Detroit City FC as number 36, Amber Morgan, enters the match for Sarah Hammond, who had a great first half. But Morgan here trying to, you know, kind of put her name in the half of who can start this final match and UWS play for Detroit City FC. Why not, you know, get everyone playing while we're out here, you know. It's only a one nothing match though and it is close. Hammond is a huge reason for that being one to nothing. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, that saved on that through ball there and now Livonia right away from kickoff are going forward. Gonna see some maybe a different mindset here from Livonia at the start of the second half. Sydney Smith pushes that one out of play for a throw in. Well it definitely had some breakthrough moments throughout the first half, so maybe you know head coach over there at Livonia City FC was like Maybe we get some more more pressure. Pushed off the ball there, Sal's and seeing. See what they can create. Sydney Smith looking up, getting it back to the newly entered into the match, Amber Morgan from Dearborn, Michigan. Dearborn Divine Child High School goalkeeper and then now University of St. Francis. Sievert. Lays it across to Leah Courtney. Plays it up, tries to Get the touch on there. Forward now. Looks like it's going to be Steglitz. It's going to try to pressure this one. Goes out of play. Kept in for a second, but Sydney Smith doing well over there. Back to Steglitz now. Pushed off the ball. Referee's going to say that was clean. That was clean too. Sabo now looking up. Has Salzenstein up with her. Salzenstein's on the ball into the box. Does well to cut back. Finds Bree Rogers edge of the air. Right for the strike from Rogers. Oh. Goes off the crossbar. Referee's going to say. The flag is up. I that might have hit the football post as well. Hit both hit both crossbars. What power from Bree Rogers there. Absolutely belted. It was Good job by Salenstein here to even create that chance. And then Rogers right footed hits the crossbar. Maybe he could have hit the crossbar then grazed off the football post. I think that's what our linesman saw. No other explanation for that. Saw Bree Rogers score that goal. Yeah, she's the got only a, goal in this one. She's got it clicking today. That was with her left and then with her right there going off the Not bar. Moreau's into the box. Sabo off Salzenstein's face. Now that would have been, uh, you know, a, been a good goal. A top yeah. 10, not top 10 moment there. I don't know. Sabo off the face right there. That would have been. I see it here. Yeah. Good ball in by Moreau's to Sabo. Sabo going for that oh. volley attempt and then just got her right there. She seems yeah. cool with it. That would have been one of those all-time moments if that found uh, the right side of the net. Redirected on target, though, I will say that would have had Shula. Always tough for a goalkeeper when there's a deflection and a shot coming your way. I'm sure Salzantino is happy with the pace that that one had. Not too faster. That could have been an issue there for her. Throw in now for Detroit City FC in their own half. Looks like Romeo is going to be taking it on that far side. Romeo... Been a mainstay in this one so far for Detroit City FC, playing all 48 minutes as we're creeping up on it. Again, we see that intern climbing. Raw athleticism fence. for sure yeah. right there. Played across Sydney Smith near side. Good job to cut inside. Livonia City forward. Salzenstein. Looks up, thought about playing it. Goes instead back to Siebert, who... A lot of bodies on this left side for Detroit right now. Finds Katie Coleman. Back to Siebert. Back to Coleman. Salzenstein. Back to goal. Doing well to cut inside. Salzenstein looking for some right-footed ball out to Romeo. Really intelligent ball there from Salzenstein. Romeo now cuts in, gets it out. To Rogers, Rogers, right-footed effort. Oh. Bar and down, nearly still alive. Today is her day. She didn't think twice about that. I don't know if she, you want to call that a cross or not. Ooh, we got to see a kick in the face yeah. here. High foot moment. I think Leah Courtney. I think there was nothing malicious about that one. I don't know if that warrants yellow card. Definitely a high boot that caught Courtney in the face, but I don't think there was anything malicious there. Referees. Checking, Leah Courtney checking to make sure she has Ooh. her teeth there. We see that one. Definitely could have been worse. Looks like, doesn't look like any blood. The ref's not stopping anything. Looks like we're just going to play on. 
I don't think there was any malice in that. No. Ball was right in front of her there. Well, excited, but you know, when you put the put your foot up that high, you're gonna, you know, you're asking some questions, to people around you. Sydney Smith cutting inside. Sydney Smith tried to find Saba, who was making that diagonal run. And then pressure there from Detroit City FC, but now Lavonia trying to play out of the back. Ooh. Forward now, Lavonia. Good job there by Leah Courtney. She's everywhere. She's clearly feeling better after that high boot. Really good job there to muscle off Delaney Millis. Snuff out that attack. Salzenstein now finds Courtney. She's probably been my woman of the match so far. Hard to you know not say Bree Rogers, but one nothing ball game. It's either gonna go to the goal scorer or a defender who came up big all day. And I think right now Courtney's been doing a lot. And we'll see how the rest of this game goes if Bree Rogers keeps feeling the way she has. That last ball before we were cut off, I don't know if that was either a cross into the box or an attempt on goal, but it almost found it. The goal, goalie had one thing and she found herself under the net that the goal or the crossbar definitely bailed her out there. Job by towards the FC back line to make up for that Aaron pass in the midfield. Sabo now, always looking lively. A runner in the middle, likes to pass it back instead. Go back to the left back, slowing things down maybe a little bit. Detroit City FC. Detroit City FC's mindset always seems to be on 10, just get something going forward. Always good to have a team that can do that, but also can slow things down and see a game out, maybe a 1 0 game or something of that sort. This game looking very similar to the one they played against Grand Haven. Went up and then just sat on it here. Good ball through to Moroz. Great find. Moroz has some space. Salzenstein wants it. Of course, she will. To go out for a corner for Detroit City FC. See a sub getting ready here for Livonia. It's a nice change of pace seeing a through ball like that and DCFC not being offside. Good ball out to the wing that Moroz is able to get on to, get a ball in. You see Coleman standing over this corner. Hand up here. Looks like the in swinger is going to be on the menu. Ball into the box. Rising up to it was Courtney. Seabrook gets a touch on it. Steglitz could get to this one. Romeo is going to have the next touch on it. Courtney now. Great touch from Romeo to get that to the two defenders. Courtney gets it out to Coleman. Coleman, right-footed ball. Thought he's going to the box. Now it's a left-footed ball in. Just over everybody who was queuing up for it. Going out for a goal kick that Shula is going to take. We see women's first-team head coach Sam Pirani there celebrating his touch on that one. Having his moment. Italian citizen, you know, very happy Probably. with the result of the Euro 2020 match. Really good job what he's done with his side in the first team for Detroit City FC this season. Their inaugural year in UWS, their first. Of course, they had that little keyword showcase they did during the pandemic last year, but that was really to just, you know, make it worth the while for those who have already committed to playing. But finished third in the table. We see Salzenstein here through on goal, cutting inside. Brought down will be another, I guess, goal kick for Livonia, I guess. Thought it was going to be a corner, but Sam Pirani's side finishing third, and we see a substitution here. That'll be number 20, Janelle Alio coming into the match. Shout out Janelle Alio, the cousin of Chad Alio, who works for Detroit City FC's operations on game day. Doing a really good job with the sweets and stuff like that, and Chad Alio hit me up in halftime and said, hey, my cousin plays for Livonia City. I asked him how to pronounce his last name, so super Great job there, Chad helping out the broadcast. Chanel's Definitely something you don't mind to hear, you know. Halftime, hey, this is how you pronounce a name. So it's been helpful. Going a full 90 minutes of, yeah. you know. Messing it up. Mispronouncing a loved one's name. We've all been there. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be the last. Throw in on the far side for Livonia. Ball played forward. Trying to find the newly substituted Jenna Guck, unable to do so. Romeo, far side. Try to get something going right away there. Rogers dispossessed in the midfield. Livonia, right before I was going to say, that was had tough. bodies committed forward. Rogers and Steglitz there just being somewhat annoying to these Livonia midfielders. Oh, that would have been a great one, too, if they pulled that off. Try Definitely to a tough decision there from the ref as it looked like uh, Livonia player, Abby Lerice, fell on the ball. It looked like she might have got a hand on it. Ball forward. Salzenstein, Let good touch with her shoulder. That one went off her hand, but referee thought that one was cool. 
edge of the area. Salzenstein tried to get the ball into the box. Goes out for a goal kick to going to be taken by Shulaw, who's still in the match for Livonia City. Salzenstein been really positive in a lot of the situations, but just lacking that final ball, that final opportunity to get a shot off. But you keep playing like this, getting in those positions, eventually it'll come. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Especially some nice dribbling or uh, a nice long shot that Bree Rogers has in her pocket right now. Something will come. We've seen this U2S two side score a lot of those long shot strikes. We saw, of course, in Detroit City FC's 2 2 draw with Corktown here at Keyworth in EWS 2. It was Brooke Honeycutt and Hannah Becker that had those two that day. Sabo cutting it now, creating space for himself. I bet the next shot there was going to, next touch, excuse me, was going to be the shot. Rogers dribbling around, trying to find Salzenstein, unable to do so. Livonia City now has the chance to clear their lines and take a breath. Detroit City definitely picking up where they left off in uh, the first half. A lot, of, a lot of pressure up top. Coleman now wins the ball back. Left-footed ball under the box. Cleared away. But really, thought Steglitz there had a good angle on that ball, but instead kept in on that far side by Mazur. But Romeo... It's back, Romeo back to Steglitz. Sabo now inside. Morose finds Rogers. Bree Rogers driving. Left footed strike. Bree Rogers comes off the shins. Katie Coleman now. Oh, they got her number now. They understand when she's running that net. Coleman in. Just oh. parried over. That was Bree Rogers. It was an awkward touch from Bree Rogers there. But it was a touch that had the goalkeeper for Livonia City, Shoe Law there. Kind of rooted to her spot. Had to jump up for it, else that was going to curl in over her head. On another day, she'd be, uh, she'd be on a hat trick right now with all the effort she's had on that. A great Coleman. save from Shulaw. Coleman corner in. Playing it short. Rogers the last Back space. to Coleman. Ball in. Oh. Just a little bit. We're going to give another corner for that, though. Looks like a deflection. A little bit of uncertainty from both the line judge and the center official, but they both agree on a corner. He's explaining his case to Coleman there. And Swinger getting ready to come in. No one really there for, but Romeo does well to clean that one up. Tries to cut in there, but now Livonia City here. If they can get to it, half bodies forward. Ball across, but snuffed out there by Sidney Smith. And now Detroit City FC looking to get forward. Moreau does really well to turn her defender last touched by that Livonia City defender, Lacey Shanaday. Sabo found. Ball in. Salzenstein looking to get to that one, but first to it was Shulaw. A lot of action for her this second half. While Detroit City FC dominated that first half, Shulaw really didn't have much to do in terms of shots that would have worried her, but a little bit more awkward bounces in the second half so far for her. Doing a good job with them, though. Not really spilling anything. Good job by Smith on this near side. Sydney Smith now looking to get something going for her side. Sabo. Moroz is in some space if she can be found. Found a really intelligent back heel there to Romeo. Just unable to corral that first touch. Now Shanaday has something going forward now for the visitors, Livonia. Shanaday inside. Rogers there. With the pressure, bounce a few times before going out of play. Will be a throw in for Detroit City FC deep in their own half. See a substitute getting ready to come on here for Livonia City. Kaylee Belton coming in, number 19. That'll be for number. 17, Jenna Guck, who was involved on that last situation where Livonia could have been through on goal. Pre Rogers does well to turn. And then quickly distributed out to Sydney Smith on this near side. Sydney Smith tries to find Sabo, who was asking for it. Just too much juice on that one. Tried to maybe sneak it in there, but Moroz almost got on the end of it. Siebert heads it up. Courtney now running back to get to this one. Oh, definitely a slip up there between the center back and goalkeeper. First time really in the second half since coming out, Amber Morgan has been called into action. and yeah. Not the 
You definitely wanted to see there. Morgan uh, sit back there and let uh, let Kaylee be able to pass her the ball. Good turn there, though, from really Salzenstein. Sabo wins it back. Isabella Sabo, right-footed effort. Just nearly over from where we're sitting. That looked a lot closer than it might have been. Isabella Sabo, of course, the winner, technically against Grand Haven last week. Been really positive in this one so far. Getting into really good positions, playing really good balls into the box. Her attacking movement was the start of the first goal in the first half. Nice heel-to-heel -heel flick that turned into a lot more. South seen there was going to bet on that one. Bouncing and getting over the defender's head. Unable to do so, though. Bree Rogers and Romeo get to this one. Nearly played away, but Romeo Ooh. with some pressure. Pulls up there a little bit, but trying to jog it off. It's a really crucial part of this Detroit City FC attack and defense so far in this one. So George Easter and... Mami Yamaguchi down there on the touchline, going to hope that she's okay to continue. Last touch by Bree Rogers goes out for a Livonia throw-in. See another substitution here is number 17, Jenna Guck, makes her way back onto the field. Just a quick water break from her on that one before entering back with about 30 minutes to play. Siebert there last to touch it. And Livonia City gained about 25 yards on that mm -hmm. throw-in. Another sport that's uh, you know quite the cause for celebration. Good job by Rogers to corral that touch. Steglitz, Romeo now putting the pressure on. Moreau's now her turn to press. Shannaday, good job there to get it out wide to Kate Mazur. Headed away by Siebert. Siebert's been in nearly all this match except for that you know, 10, 15-minute spell she sat on the bench while she got tended to by the trainer for that collision that took place. Romeo now. Yeah, another sub looking to come in for Livonia. Zella Griffith. Sabo now. Forward. Plays in Salzenstein. Tried to get it back to Sabo. Maybe just too excited there. It'll go out for a throw in deep in Livonia's half for Detroit City FC. Moreau's looking eager to run over to this. Moreau's finds Steglitz now. Steglitz chests it down. Still Steglitz. Cuts inside. Steglitz right-footed strike. Saved. Parried away, but still not out of the woods yet. Ball in by Salzenstein. Miscommunication. Coleman tucks home. 2-0 Detroit City FC. A miscommunication at the back from that Livonia City back line. And that's enough from Katie Coleman to give Detroit City FC the 2-0 advantage. We saw here the ball by Salzenstein. Not really communicated well. And then Coleman really had the whole net to aim for there. And she makes it 2-0 Detroit City FC. Great bit of play there from DCFC. Being able to finally put one on target. And you ask some questions. That's, you're going to get some answers back. Able to parry the ball out. The ball is going to find one of our attackers and put it in the net. I just parry the ball out, which, you know, in itself is an okay act. But while your center back's climbing on top of you, ill-advised. Yeah. Can't do it all, you know. Sabo now. Pressure on. This is going to take some of the pressure off that maybe Detroit City FC had been feeling for a little bit since we've come out of the break. Good job there by Leah Courtney to get it away. Steglitz does well. Steglitz did so well on that goal. We didn't see it in the replay, but Steglitz really was the architect behind that goal, dribbling into the box, doing well to create space for herself. Got the first shot off, which then led to the rebound uh, attempt. It's going to go out of play there. For nice dribbling in that play, too. Nice little fake shot. Create some space for herself to get that first shot off. Something we've seen a lot of success from, from the Detroit forwards being able to dribble around some defenders. Always looking Good. a little... Foul there. Referee on that far he side. Overruled. Who was, who was closest to it. He would have had a better view than the center judge. And from up here, it looked like a foul. But the center referee waves off those concerns. we got three, a trio of subs coming in for Detroit City FC. Mentioned that first half, they're letting them play. But usually, referee closest to it gets to make the call. Not today. Our main official definitely waved off that. 
feeling that she had the better look at it. You saw her do it with her hands, too. Yeah, she kind of literally it waved it yeah. away. We see three substitutes here for Detroit City FC. Tori Singstock entering the match. Number 47. We see number 26 for Detroit City FC. Caroline Fleming coming in for the first time today. And then number 37, Julia Stancato coming back into this one. So two attacking substitutions for Detroit City FC. Romeo coming out for the first time in this one. We saw her pull up a few minutes ago, but seems to have worked that one off. But still. So well deserved rest for her. Stancato, who we saw play in the right wing, a lot, of, a lot of versatility with that, being able to drop back to the right back position. Definitely have some creativity and some, uh, some pace on that right wing back spot. The way this Detroit City FC side plays, you know, putting a winger in a right wing back soccer, all they got to do to be successful is track back and do what they're always doing going forward. Especially when you have such commanding center backs. Mazur now, ball into the box, but only as far as the key worth wall. Is that in turn who did a great job to go get that ball in the first half? He's back. Plays a great ball over to Amber Morgan to get Detroit City FC back underway. Sydney Smith on this near side. Head up, doing really well to turn inside there. Janelle Alio. Siebert here plays a calm pass back to Morgan. Gets it out to Smith. Tries to find the newly substituted Caroline Fleming. Can't wait to see what she brings to this left side of the field. See what she can provide for Sing Stock. Caroline Fleming has some appearances Ooh. in the UWS first team. Great job there by the second goal scorer, Coleman to really just get the better there nice little nutmeg of Jenna right Guck. There. Wow. That was awesome. Yeah, we got it all going Steglitz. on right now. Forward now. Sabo has bodies forward. She's going to find Fleming if he can take a touch. She gets it past the Livonia goalkeeper, but the referee says offside. That would have been a really tight call by that far line judge. Referee didn't wave. Center referee didn't wave her off that time. Caroline Fleming seems to be in good spirits. Yeah, here we go in the midfield right here. We're going to have <laughs> – Somersault, yeah. <laughs> Put that one in the huddle tape. Oh, absolutely. Definitely some dancing. Gymnastics, or gymnastics yeah. in her uh Have in your her pick. Past, yeah. Usually see a flip like that usually on long throw-ins, but not usually in a midfield tackle. So that was quite the sight to see. Forward now on that far side, Stancato, the winger turned right back. That's well to find Singstock. Singstock, a few touches, edge of the area, finds Fleming, a really clever flick back to Singstock. Tori Singstock, right-footed effort, finds the back of the net. Really good play there from Caroline Fleming and Tori Singstock. We were talking about the danger she possesses up front, and we saw it on full display there. Oh, that's why she's the leading goal scorer. You see this 1-2 developing, as we see, and she's able to take that one touch away from the defender and belt it to the left side. On the half yeah, volley. Yeah, that out. Good, clever through ball there by Fleming. Really casual about it, she oh, was yeah. too. She's only been on the field for about four or five minutes, but already having a huge impact on this one. Detroit City FC 3, Livonia, <laughs> the visitors, yes. Livonia City, nil. Livonia. Put them to the sword now, Detroit, really stepping it up. Without get, getting these one-twos to finally develop and putting shots on target. Once you're asking the questions, there you go. Going to get answers. Yeah. Livonia City had Can't their win the raffle if you don't buy a ticket, you know. Exactly. Livonia City had their chance to get their way back into this one and equalize things that won when we saw that miscommunication at the back mm -hmm. between the Detroit City FC back line and Amber Morgan, but they just didn't capitalize on it, and that shows how cool of a game football can be sometimes. Corner now for Livonia City, far side. Ball in. Oh Morgan. Not too confidently, but does what she needs to. Referee's going to say there was a foul in the box against Livonia City. Definitely so. was one of their better looks if uh, the Livonia player was able to get their header on that. She's definitely in front of the goalkeeper when the ball came in. Definitely would have had to open that if she made contact with it. Good mentality there from Fleming. She had that goal ruled off for an offside, but to still be involved, not let the head drop, and play a really clever through ball into the path of Singstock, which makes this game 3 nothing. Singstock again involved, tried to head it to Fleming, maybe return the favor. Just clever play there by the Livonia center back. Good play there, though, by Steglitz to maintain possession for her side. Sabo now. 
Gets it out to Stancato. Stancato's going to know how to shape a ball, just not really. Seeing hard. Sabo drop back a little bit more after these uh, last couple substitutions, being able to create from further behind while St. Sox definitely coming out fresh, being able to play at the strike position. Another substitute here for Livonia. As you see Mara McLean enter the match again. Sabo throws it in. Finds Stan Cotto. Back to Sabo. Played across. Cleared out. We're gonna get to see our favorite ball boy do his thing again. That was yep. a that was a cool jump over the fence too. Really casual with yeah. that. Lot of Fixing the hair. Up. Yep. Nice uh, shoot to sock ratio for him today. Not too bad. Yep. Put about a seven inch inseam on those shorts though. Yeah. Yeah. You want to go for five. Here we go. Fleming again. Really good job. Left footed ball into the box. Parried oh. away. Nearly parried into the back of her own net there with Shoe Law. Composed. They're all laughing about it. That back line. Did well. Oh, yeah. Happy, happy to get that one after uh, conceding the last couple. Definitely good save from her, making sure she didn't put it into her own net. Such a powerful cross into the box, though, from Fleming that she was never going to be able to catch that one with Shoe Law, but did well with it to parry it away. You see I mean, that a lot at this level of soccer. If you put like a really hard ball on on target, that not being able to corral it w really well, and you see like the parries go left and right. And ball here into Fleming. Sing stock to Fleming. Shot in. Fleming oh. just wide of that far post. That would have been a reverse of the last goal we saw as we see Lacey Shannaday come back into this one. It was a good ball by Sing stock to find Fleming. We'll see it here. Fleming took right-footed strike and Shula fully extended for that one. Definitely happy beaten though. That. Definitely beaten though with Shoe Law. Mm. Just definitely happy to see that go trickling out of play and not into her own net. Once it went past her, she doesn't know if it's going to go in, if it's going to hit the post or what. So she'll be counting her blessings now that it stayed out. Fleming does well to poke it past the Livonia defender, but goes out for a throw in. 71 and a half minutes gone here at Keyboard Stadium. 3-0 lead for Detroit City FC. The goal scoring started out with Bree Rogers. Beautiful left-footed effort from outside of the area in that first half. Then, second half, we saw Katie Coleman get on the end of a miscommunication as part of the Livonia back line. And then we just saw it a few minutes ago. Fleming to Singstock, and Singstock on the half volley makes it 3-0. And now back on the ball again. Tried to get Steglitz involved with that play. Courtney runs out. Gets it out wide to... Stan Cotto, really long ball of the top. Sing stock in. Fleming now settles it down, unable to settle it down all the way. But that would have been a really positive move there from Detroit City FC. Smith. Siebert now. Fleming. A lot more energy for Detroit. It seemed like they're, able to, they're flying around the ball in this attacking third. Livonia City just not, be, not able to clear it or sustain any real possession. Like Caroline Fleming so definitely has a lot to do with that. And oh, she's coming out flying for ball sure. Ball into the box, headed on target. I think she would have liked a overlapping runner there. Into the hands of Shulaw, who all think this hitters did a pretty good job in net today. Not really much you could have done about maybe the second goal, maybe you could have done a little bit better for. But that sing stock shot, find a keeper that's going to stop that one. And then the Bree Rogers strike was just oh, masterful. Steglitz here played in by Fleming. Unable to get on the end of it, it was Shannon Day who got back. Another touch here for our guy over there. Sabo going to take this throw in. Sabo has been... Brie Rogers, a lot of space, finds her. See, see what she can do over here. Not too much. She was closed down by two defenders. Good job there by number 15, Kate Mazur. She's been probably Livonia's brightest attacking player so far in this one. Oh yeah, she's she's definitely been everywhere. Sabo tried to push that one past her. It's going to go out for a throw in. Weather here is cooled down a bit at Keyword Stadium. Got some clouds over the stadium. There was always a threat of rain today. Nothing's come of it yet. Knock on wood if you're watching at home. I'm sure all the fans appreciate a rainless day out here as Livonia City are passing the ball forward. A deflection brings it close to on net. 
Well, again, there more confidently this time coming out to claim that one. 74 minutes gone. That was her third opportunity to have a say in this one. First two, not really looking too sure, but that one as cool as ever. Fleming now just trying to run at Livonia City's back line. Why not? She's done that since coming on and found great success doing so. But not the winner on that one there. Good pressure from Rogers in the midfield. Win possession back. Detroit City FC, they're up 3 nothing. have yet to take their foot off the gas. They're trying to prove themselves. Only two more matches before a lot of these players go back to college or back to high school to get ready to go to college. So they're playing for everything, more than just a scoreline or a result. They're playing to maybe impress some coaches, get some huddle tape, and build. Build some momentum for this upcoming school year and season. Good touches from Fleming there. It's going to stay with Detroit City FC. Been a couple times so far to the referee. Center's not been too sure about her line judge partners here. As Sabo has some space back to goal. Really good ball to find Stancato out there on that far side. Right-footed ball in. A little bit too far in and too far high. We'll go out for a goal kick for Livonia City. We see another substitution here for Livonia. It's number 12, sleeveless number 12. Going to come in, Delaney Millis. Millis. Close to being uh, the nicest last name, Mills, you know. It's one letter off. One thing I've noticed uh, for DCFC this half is that the wingbacks are kind of backed up a little bit more. When Romeo was out there, I noticed that she wasn't pressed up as high or making the runs or positioned as high when Detroit had the ball in the attacking third. Now I feel like they just backed off and just – don't want to see a uh, through ball go by with this lead and ruin this clean sheet that they have. Which I'm sure Stan is trying to any reason to find her way up there after getting a taste of playing up and attacking during the first half, playing right wing. You mentioned it when she came on, that versatility that she possesses to be able to do that, help her team out, help Romeo out, who was really one of the Detroit City FC's best players, deserves a rest on the bench now. Ball out of the box. So Again, a miscommunication nice here. Could have cost them. Fleming wasn't made aware of what was going on. And now Livonia, through the substitute, the newly entered Delaney Millis, plays the ball up to Kimberly Siebert for her to deal with. And back to number 36, Amber Morgan in net. He's going to get it out. Back to Morgan. Their own game right there for a second. Bree Rogers didn't really want that one in the first place. She was pointing away from it as she was receiving it. Livonia now. Edge of the area, referee says that was clean. Cleared away by Sydney Smith. A bit fortunate there, Bree Rogers. It looked like that might have been something that could have been called for a foul, but the ref did not see it that way. I'm saying but the referee all game's been letting them play, and you know that was a good example of that. If that one would have been called after some of the non-calls mm -hmm. we've seen, definitely would have felt a little bit harsh. From memory, I feel like she's. I've only seen like two or three free kicks just in the middle of the field. I haven't seen anything like from an attacking point of view. That would have been ants. Would have been a nice shot on goal or anything. Substitution coming in now for Detroit City FC. It'll be number 55, Yvonne Clark. We saw her come in for Kimberly Siebert when she was being tended to by those trainers. It's Yvonne Clark's first appearance so far for Detroit City FC this year, being coming on to replace number 41. That's going to be Allison Steglitz, who had a great cameo on this one. Of course, Steglitz more of an advanced midfielder, so we're going to see Yvonne Clark just kind of. Shore up the defense a little bit more. Singstock plays the ball in. Looks like she's going out to the right, seeing Stancata being able to push up to the midfield spot. Let me pay on the right wing. But Yvonne Clark's, can, Yvonne Clark's out there on the right back now. Canton, Michigan. She's a product of DCFC Youth West. So always cool to see Detroit City FC youth players get, you know, come up through the ranks. It's still in the early stages of its inception is the Detroit City FC youth setup. But to already see... Some of those better players, the cream rise to the top and get some minutes for Detroit City FC. Really cool to see, and that's how you know most clubs should be built. Forward now, Sabo does well. Get it out to Rogers, who's been just a ever present in that Detroit City FC midfield today. Singstock with a lot of space out here, and she now gets the ball. Singstock does well to cut to the right. Right footed effort from Singstock. Hits one of the sweets. I believe that was sweet eight. With that ball found there, the M and Ham Tramick. Really did well to edge of the area to get the space for herself, to get the shot off, create that angle for herself. Not too far wide of that post. The speed on it would have been tough for Shulaw to deal with. 
this game stays at three. Reaching the 80th minute in this game. A whole lot of time left for Livonia. Detroit more content to just play the ball around and strike when the play opens up for them. Ball coming down the left. Sing sack not, not being able to get on, this, get on that ball. Smith out here on the left, passing it to the middle now. Try to get Fleming involved again. Every time Fleming's been on the ball and Able involved. Keep it in. Ball in left footed. I was just saying there that every time Caroline Fleming's been involved going forward for Detroit City FC, it's been trouble for Livonia. So not for a bad idea to get her involved, especially the way she's playing right now. Livonia haven't had a lot of answers for her in the defense. Sabo still running as she was in the first minute. So obviously... Teague not an issue there, really big stamina player. Rogers still pressing in that midfield. Headed away there by Smith. Good close control there from Fleming. Tried to get involved on that far side. Stancato didn't get all the way over to her though. Good job from Coleman keeping it in. Fleming now through the legs. It's not the first nutmeg we've seen today, but through the legs there of Zelia Griffith. Nutmegs are always a pleasure to see, especially in, you know, not just on a broadcast TV stream, whatever you wish, on YouTube, but in person. They're always a peach to see whenever they come off. Another B has entered the, the press box. Yep. If I get stung live on air, I might just find a new uh, career at yep. this point. Hands are raised in this press box right now. I have flowers on my shirt again. I didn't learn my lesson from yesterday. I don't know where he went. We'll see. He'll he'll debut in a few more seconds here. Amber Morgan slowing things down. Gets it to Kimberly Siebert. Siebert, of course, been a really strong sort of a linchpin in this Detroit City FC defense today. Formerly of University of Michigan. Started over 40 games in three years for the Wolverines over in Ann Arbor. Her first appearance for Detroit City FC was last time out against the Grand Haven Admirals. And just a She's really outside if she can get to that. Really good ball out to Stancato from Singstock. Stancato, if she can get the ball in, does well to cut inside. Now dribbling into the box. Low ball in. Fleming creates space and tucks it home. Really well-worked team goal there from Detroit City FC to make it 4 nothing. Yeah, we had a lot of space out on the right side, and she was able to be found, Stankata. She was able to put one defender away with a nice nice little drag back, and she pokes it on in there. And Fleming, who's found herself in the middle of the field, was able to tuck that one away very nicely. Fleming's definitely got a smile on her face after having a goal taken away from her earlier on in the half. Now has a goal and an assist to her name. Since coming on. Definitely been a spark plug substitution. Good stuff out of Caroline Fleming. She's been unplayable since coming on if you're Livonia City. Yeah, they've just had no answers for her. She had the freedom to go from the left to the middle. And that ball from that creativity from Stancata was was a pleasure to see. As Amber Morgan goes and picks that ball up. I was looking to reset out here. That was a good ball out by Singstock, though, to find Stan Cotto, who did all the work from there. But Absolutely. It's something they fi defined since uh, coming out you know, less offsides, like we saw in that first half. That seemed like every attacking play ended in that. Fleming again here, cutting inside. <laughs> right for the strike from Fleming. Ooh, the really. may or may not have caught a inherent hand. Hard pressed to find a referee to call that even with – the handball laws that we have in place here in Absolutely soccer. Not. Sydney Smith cutting inside, doing well to get it out to Fleming, the hot hand. And Fleming takes a touch. Singstock now on this wing. Into the area. Getting it back out to Sydney Smith, who has a go herself. It was curling Ooh. into that top corner. Maybe Shulaw would have had an issue with it, maybe a few more feet back there from Smith. But a good ball in. Could have been some trouble going the other way. Siebert there 
Trying to win the ball back in the midfield, resorting now to that center back position. Good win there by Clark. Clark's going to play the ball forward to Sing Stock. Took her out a little she bit wider than she would have liked. Fleming in the middle again. Fleming might as well have a tent out there. Camping in the middle of the pitch in the box. Getting some deja vu there. Cutting in Sabo, edge of the area. Out to Sing Stock, who does well. Low ball in. Crucial touch there. Fleming again trying to get on the end of it. It's going to be Stan Cotto on this near side. Smith now, right-footed effort. Oh. That one dragged a little bit too far to that near post. It's like she's going to be coming off. That'll be Salzenstein that enters the match. She might have dragged a foot on that turf, and Turf Monster might have gotten, uh, gotten her cleat there. Stretch that one out. A new turf, though, here at Keyword Stadium, of course, replaced in before the 2019 season got underway. It was Detroit City FC came here in 2016. It was had been there for you know, 30 years. A long time for turf to go through different seasons, fall, spring, winter. Of course, the Ralph Wilson grant allowed Keyword Stadium to get new turf, and it's been probably a pleasure for all the players who have to play here, both football, soccer, and everything in between, especially the neighborhood kids that inhabit the stadium whenever there's not an event going on. Any given day, you can find kids out here playing soccer. Really cool thing to see. Universal language is the beautiful game. Lavonia in the midfield. Getting it out. 86 minutes come and gone in this one. Good job to find Coleman. Getting ready to go here again. Detroit City FC. Sabo finds in some space if she can get there. It's going to be like number 26, Fleming. Caroline Fleming. Who's now found herself to the right side of the field. She's kind of trying to mark off that bingo card. First playing on the left, then the center. Now on the right, getting a goal and an assist to her name. A couple subs here for Livonia. Number two coming in for them. Maura McGlynn. I've seen her name a few times as we got number 15 again for Livonia. Jogging off, Kate Mazur. Who's done all she's kind to really keep Livonia in the game as much as she could, but she just couldn't sustain a viable possession or attacking threat. You do, you just, you just need service. That's what it comes down to when you're a striker. I mean, you know, you can be the best striker in the world and have issues if you're not getting fed from your midfielders or even wing backs and center backs with diagonal balls over the top and things of that nature. We'll see a throw in now for Livonia. Headed away, back out, hits the Detroit City FC signage. On that far side. Of course, Leah Courtney, you mentioned it, hasn't put a foot wrong all day. You said that about minute 46, and it still holds true in minute 87 and a half. So. She's doing me well as a broadcaster today. <laughs> Didn't <laughs> want to see any slip-ups, you know. That was a proclaim so early. We didn't see it, but that was a really good roll from the ball boy intern to the Ball girl in turn on that far side. Who also hasn't put a foot wrong on No, the, ba the ball kids today have been incredible. Not even call them kids. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even know Our what fellow co-workers. Fellow co-workers, really great stuff from them on the touch lines today. Sells the team there. Unable to control that one. It's going to be Janelle. Alio plays that one into the midfield. Sabo, though, wins it back. Got Fleming up front. Salzenstein still involved with this one. Salzenstein going to slip through Fleming. Fleming now. One-on-one -on -one with the Livonia defender. Going to cut to her left foot. Left-footed effort from Fleming. Ooh. Goes into the hands of Shulaw, who looked for a second. Might have had a problem with it, but. Oh, pretty fortunate there. It looked, like, it. looked like that could have uh, slipped through her legs after trying to corral that. But, like you said, it was a good save by Shulaw as the shot comes in. Fumbled with it a little bit, but she had it. Good job from Fleming, though, to cut inside on Claire. Here we on. As we see, edge of the area, Sabo gets it out to Fleming. Driving, left-footed effort from Caroline Fleming. Takes a hop and a bounce before getting to Shulaw, but which you know could put a goalkeeper off. Mm. But Shulaw did well to keep her head there and she had a lot of action this last half. She also led in three goals, but like yeah. we said before, I mean, really the only the second one that Detroit City FC scored, she maybe could have done a better job on. But I thought she's been pretty composed, all things considered, um, in net for Livonia so far today. Sam Perani down there on the touchline, looking up at us as we have a small break in play as 
trying to get Livonia City back going again. Creeping up on 90 minutes. A dominant performance from Detroit City yeah. FC. Drew Law is going to come here and see what she can belt into the box. See if they can get one last goal or one last effort at goal before this game ends. To the road, perhaps. Yep. Shoe law Something now. Smile about. Ball in. Well, it's great awareness from uh, Amber Morgan to kick that one out instead of picking it up after it was played by one of the defenders for DCFC. Really good job by Fleming. Keeps it in. Not only keeps it in, but does a really good job to beat her defender. And now head up, looking forward, finds Singstock with a gorgeous through ball. Singstock's going to have Selzenstein up with her. Tori Singstock gets brought down. Referee is going to say that was all ball. And yet again, Singstock with a golden opportunity to maybe find Selzenstein up with her forward and goes for the shot. Shoot or shoot. I told well, yeah, you de definitely one of those scenarios one. where, you know, the forward wants to take the shot on. Could easily tap that in to... Her teammate, Sally Stein, who made the nice run. I forget had the whistle in her mouth there for the foul on San Cato, but elects not to blow it. Forward was San Cato after coming out of that right back position as Clugs kind of drifted over there. Now an added time, which uh, the referee will have on the field. We don't have a fourth official, so we will not get a signal of what she might be thinking for added time. Hard to tell. I mean, you know, three goals, all the stoppages, but, you know, situations like that, referees just like to see the game end, and yeah. I'm sure Livonia City would be happy to see this game end, too. Good ball there by Steglitz to try to play in. Fleming, who does well to keep it in for a split second before it's pushed out by Kate Kongolowski. Kate Kongolowski on that one. That's referee, three buzzes of the whistle. 90 minutes up, 90 minutes down here at Keyword Stadium. Detroit City FC gets the 4 nothing win. Chris, every bit of that 4 nothing is deserved. Absolutely, you know. Bree Rogers hit with the first goal, and she had a lot of opportunities in the second half, being able to belt the ball, and then just uh, the energy and speed of the front three, able to attack and score the goals has been the difference here. For I mentioned it in the open. This is the last UWS2 match here at Keyword Stadium. If you've tuned into any of our matches here on YouTube, you've tuned in, you've come to these matches, team appreciates it. We appreciate it as a broadcast crew. You guys tuned in. It's been a pleasure. Chris Mills, Jarrett Mackey, really dominant 4 nothing performance. Detroit City FC gets the win. Bree Rogers officially the woman of the match. Tori Singstock did really well after coming on. Really all around performance for George Easter's side. I've been Jarrett Mackey. He's been Chris Mills. Thank you guys for joining us here at Keyword Stadium. Detroit City FC and their UWS2 home campaign with a win against Livonia City. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.